hello, this is David. I'm kind of frustrated. I um, already did this. Then Windows Movie Maker decided to be an asshole. Anyway, let me get into it. This is my review of The Hunger Games. Now, I want to kind of do this periodically, meaning, you know, maybe after every maybe after like every chapter or something like that, or anything significant that happens. But so far, I've only read the first five pages. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but to me, in the first five to ten pages, you find out the most amount of detail. And if you just skim through the first five to ten pages, you're going to miss out a lot, because I think that the whole story is revealed in the first five to ten pages. That's why it takes me so long to read a book, because I really analyze it. I don't just skim through it. But anyway... Let's get right into it. Now, I don't want to do like what I've, you know, I don't want to do like a step by step what's happened so far because to I me mean, that's just annoying. I mean, just read the book. Um, but anyway, some things I've learned in the first five pages about the main character or the narrator, Katniss is her name. It's kind of a stupid name. She's 16 years old, she's female, and she's from District 12, nicknamed The Seam, which I'll get into later is actually very interesting. Um, some character traits I found out about this uh, girl is that she's very selfish and egotistical. Now, I don't know if there's going to be more signs of this, but so far, <laughs> I'd say it's safe to say because she tried to drown a cat that her sister brought home in a bucket. And all oh, her reason was to have one less mouth to feed. Now, to me, that's a little extreme. I mean, you could totally just, you know, throw it out in the street but to drown it, to me, that's a little excessive. I mean, if I was in that situation, I would definitely just, you know, if, let's say, you know, it was poor reasons and I didn't want my, you know, my little sister to, oh, and by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, it was her sister that brought home a cat. Um, you know, I would probably just, you know, like, you know, put it outside, you know, make it run away or something like that, you know, given those circumstances, but to actually drown it, to me, that's a little extreme, and it kind of shows some cold-bloodedness, but I'll get into that later. Um, and it, it definitely does. The reasons for this could probably be for, you know, poverty reasons. You know, she has no, you know, I, I mean, I guess if you live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, this isn't so uncommon. Um, another thing I learned is that she's kind of a pessimist. She believes that the closest that she'll ever come to love is feeding a cat entrails of killed rats and mice. And that, that's pretty depressing. Um, the reason that she probably feels like that is probably because her father died. And I think once you lose someone you really love in the world, you don't really think that you'll ever find that kind of love again. And this all happened when she was 11 years old, which is pretty sad. But I mean, you shouldn't kill cats. So. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just move on. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that's another thing. Hold on. I wanted to say this. If you kill a cat, there's something wrong with you. I mean, I can understand killing a fish, but a cat or a dog? What the fuck's wrong with you? I mean, come on. They're so cute. Why would you kill something so cute? What the hell is wrong? Sick. Okay, next. I learned that she's actually very cautious, and this is actually kind of interesting, the detail of why I think this. Um, There's a fence that separates the meadow and the woods. It's, called, it's an electric fence, and... It's supposed to be a 24-hour electric fence, but I guess the they only, the um, District 12 only gets power, like maybe two hours a day at most, I guess. So that gives you like maybe a 1 in 12th chance of getting electrocuted. And some interesting things here that I learned is that it hums whenever it's on. Now, this seems very obvious or whatever, you know. But the thing is, is that it says that she always takes a moment to see if the fence is active. And to me, that kind of shows her cautiousness. I mean, I think that there's no accidental detail in the story. For it to emphasize always, it could have just said, you know, she takes a moment to see. But she says it always does. And I kind of think that shows her paranoia and her hunter-like attitude, which I'll get into. Uh, she's definitely more, you know, she definitely looks at things more. And I think that has to do with maybe her father dying. Maybe not trusting people or something like that. Um, she's also a skilled hunter, you know, she does hunt many, many things. So far I've only learned that she hunts rats and mice, and maybe some cats, you know, because she's a cat hater. And she learned all this from her father. 
she uses a bow, which is also crafted by her father. And she was probably taught the bow by her father. I can't remember. Uh, she's skilled at hunting. Most people, I guess, in the wo- wouldn't go in the woods with just a knife. But I guess she does. And she's very brave, I would say, and bold. Because she goes into the woods despite the penalties and even worse, the dangers. And the penalties, you'd think, okay, whatever, you know. But the penalties for doing this is like death. Not for necessarily hunting, but what she does. But I'll get into that later. Um, She's very stoic. She masks her emotions. And she doesn't make small talk unless it's polite. Um, She definitely masks her emotions, I would say, because of her dad. Maybe some other circumstances. I mean, her lifestyle is pretty shitty. And I guess there's that government thing that comes in there that kind of makes her mask her emotions, but I'll get into that later. Um, another thing I kind of liked, not necessarily about her, but, you know, given her circumstances, is that she kind of cares for her sister. I mean, this is, you know, not a big deal, but the thing is that she said something very cool I've liked, and she doesn't want Prim, which is her little sister, to repeat how she, you know, to repeat her words or be who she is, which I think is kind of cool. It kind of shows, you know, she know like, it shows the main character knows she's giving off a negative vibe, and she doesn't want her sister to be like that. You know, I, I like that kind of trait. You know, that's not hypocritical, I wouldn't say. Um, another thing I uh, think is that she's definitely a cat hater, and possibly cold-blooded. You know, my evidence is that she tried to drown a fucking cat, and also that she killed a lynx, which I guess is a cat, for scaring off game. Now, once again, you don't have to kill something that gets in your way. If you were simply like, you know, oh, well, this cat, this one cat is scaring off game. Well, let me just take this one cat and put it somewhere else or something like that. You know, to me, to go as far as killing it is a little extreme. I mean, even if it's any circumstances, like it doesn't necessarily have to be a cat to make it kind of illogical. It's kind of like with anything, even if it was an object, there's no reason to blow it up. You know, you could simply just move it. Um, I think that's kind of ridiculous. I don't know if there's some kind of cat hatred going on here, but, you know, that's whatever. Um, I learned that she makes most of her money, I guess, selling the food that she hunts and stuff like that, and that's in the black market. And there's some more things, like she trusts Gail, but I'll get into these other characters later. I don't really know a lot about Prim, Gail, or her father or mother to really analyze them. Um, okay, so. Another thing, I guess, you know, like I said, her she does, her father's death really did impact her. She still thinks about it, you know, five years later and wakes up screaming. Um, so I'm here, okay, so now let me get into my first prediction. And there's some interesting foreshadowing that happens, I think, and this is kind of obvious. The first one is that, you know, she thinks that she'll never find love. Well, clearly there's going to be some love going on, especially with this Gale character I learned about. Um, Another thing that I really found interesting is that she hides bows in the woods. I don't know if The Hunger Games is taking place in the woods, but she may try and use these bows later on. And since she goes into woods often, I'm not sure if the Hunger Games takes place in your District 12, which I, I think that would be pretty cool. It kind of would give her an advantage if she were to be in the Hunger Games, which probably obviously is going to happen. So it kind of would give her, you know, she would have territorial advantage, I guess, over some people, which would be pretty interesting. And, and you know, now that I think about it, uh, this isn't really planned, but I th- think that she definitely would kill a kid. If you're willing to kill a cat, I'm sorry, but you're probably going to kill a kid. So I'll, I'll get into that later. But I don't want to get off track here. Okay, so I don't know enough about Prim. Okay, so the father, I, I guess I don't really know anything about him, but I learned that he died in a mine explosion. And there seems to be a lot of emphasis around the mines and the dangers. But anyway, I'll get into that later. Um, I don't know what the day of reaping is. I'm assuming it's the draw for the Hunger Games. Okay, and here's the next thing I want to talk about is District 12. It's nicknamed the Seam. It's a poor district, I mean, obviously. Um, the workers there, I guess, don't really have, have like, a don't care attitude. Um, 
it's almost like they're being enslaved. And I think there seems to be... Okay, okay. The mines in the uh, District 12 seem to have a lot of emphasis. There seems to be a lot of workers focused around that. I don't know if the government's using that district for the mines or there's some kind of something they're doing. I don't know. This could be interesting. It's definitely dangerous, um, I guess, that people don't even bother trying to get off this coal dust or whatever it was off of them. And there's a mine explosion, so that's obviously shows danger. The people of District 12 seem to not really care about the laws that the government have. Um, so an interesting quote says that they would actually risk execution to hunt for woods. I mean, I'm sorry. I need I need to change that. But to, um, hunt for food in the woods. Um, that definitely shows a lot about their situation. Um, and it says they would... Uh, well, this, says, this is actually a prediction. Um, I think that they would probably rebel if they had a chance. And I don't see why not. I don't even think that's a prediction. That's pretty obvious. There's obviously a lot of food shortages. Um, I, I like this quote. It was uh, District 12 where you can starve to death in safety. I thought that was pretty funny. So here's my second prediction about this instance. There seems to be some foreshadowing about the... Uh, it's not really direct foreshadowing, but how there's tight control over the government. I mean, over this district by the government. And it makes me think that a revolution is very possible later on. Maybe not in this book. But I definitely think that's going to happen. Alright, and some other things I learned about the meadow. Don't know enough. Here's an, I learned about the electric fence, which, you know, like I said earlier, is supposed to be 24 hours, but it's only, you know on, you know, one twelfth of the time. And I, I know that this detail is probably significant towards the main character being cautious, but I also think it has an interesting thing here. It could be a way of escape of the Hunger Games. Maybe something like that, you know. If it does take place in these woods, I don't I absolutely believe that she's gonna escape with her sister or something or escape with, you know I don't really know if that's going to happen. I I do know that she's probably going to be in the Hunger Games. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be, you know, her sister or her or something like that. And the reason why I say her sister because I know that her sister gets called in the prediction because I just, some things got spoiled for me thanks to my girlfriend. But anyway, um, can mean the way it's going to okay. All right, okay, okay. So I do think that this could be more significant maybe towards even killing someone. Like, I think there could be a scene where, you know, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe she fakes her death for electricity. I don't know. So there could be a lot of things emphasized there. Um, okay, so more things to learned about. The woods obviously has is very dangerous, has a lot of predators inside. It's hard, you get lost in there. It's hard to find food. It's illegal to poach. Another thing I learned about is the government. The government in this society, I guess, has a, a lot of control over the people. Um, they also seem to have, seem, <laughs> under heavy control, which to me is very interesting while I'll get into. It has that big brother feel, you know, there's no real freedom of speech. I guess you even get punished for speaking ill against the government. Uh, some laws I learned about. Um, it, one is inciting rebellion, and the penalty is public execution. And I guess the purpose is obviously to s stop a revolution. I mean, and there's no reason to make it public if you weren't trying to make it, you know, install some kind of fear or set an example. Um, another thing is poaching in the woods, which is kinda, I guess kind of like hunting. And the penalty is like one of the highest. Now, I guess it isn't necessarily death, but I guess the purpose is to kind of have control and also to stop them from getting free food and maybe even to stop them from becoming skilled hunters when they get into the Hunter Games. And I'm not sure exactly what the winner gets. Maybe some kind of freedom. Who knows? So, peacekeepers, um, I don't really know anything about them, but I do know that they work for the government, maybe. I don't really know that either, but um, I know that they're kind of okay with 
them breaking the laws and hunting because I guess maybe they're poor too since they're the number one customer. And I learned about other things, the Panem and the Capital and some other things, but I don't really know too much about them yet. So anyway, this is my five-page analysis of this book so far. All right, and I will get into this a little bit later, probably after the first chapter. But like I said, some things, some keynotes to go back and look over is the fact that there's a lot of foreshadowing. And I definitely think that this girl is probably okay with killing a kid because i was wondering if i I know that the hunger games has some kind of killing involved with children and to me if you can kill a cat or a dog you just i don't see any reason why you couldn't kill a kid i mean you can kill a person but to kill an animal that's a dog or cat to me it just seems worse i know that I'm, i'm joking of course when i say that i mean obviously i know that Killing kids a lot worse, but I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, just look how cute they are. I mean, come on. All right. So anyway, and then I'll, I'll probably get learn more about this. And I, I do think that my prediction about the electric fence and some other things are right. Anyway, thank you very much. Goodbye.